actually get that name because it kind of looks like a chocolate chip cookie and us scientists aren't always the most creative people on earth so hence the name chocolate chip sea star we call it a sea star not a starfish because does that look like a fish to you i didn't think so uh these guys belong to a, a family called echinoderms and most of the animals i'll be talking about today are echinoderms so echinoderms basically uh, lack a true brain they do have a brain stem which is like a conglomeration of nerve cells that send signals to their body uh, but they actually aren't really capable of thinking or feeling any pain, which is kind of good news for the sea star because you know how he defends himself? Well, he will actually take his own arm off if a predator attacks him in the wild, and he'll slowly walk away with hundreds of two feet, and the predator will actually eat his arm usually, and that will usually work for him. And as long as he doesn't get a fungal or bacterial infection, he will grow his arms back repeatedly throughout his lifetime. Uh, this guy has hundreds of tube feet in between each arm, so all those little red dots or pink dots you see are actually tube feet. So unlike a fish, he does not swim, he walks, and he has little suction cups on those feet, similar to an octopus or a squid, and that's how he can stick to the sides of the tank, like in Finding Nemo and Finding Dory. Uh, they also have little tiny dots for eyes, they're called eye spots or light sensors. There's one at the end of each arm. So they have five eyes, so three more eyes than humans have, but they cannot see the way humans do. They actually can only see light and dark shadows. Um, and a lot of echinoderms actually can't see at all. Uh, another really interesting thing about sea stars is they'll actually spit their stomach outside of their body to eat. They have two stomachs instead of one. Uh, and it kind of looks like a balloon filling up with air and they're almost always eating. So if you've ever been scuba diving or snorkeling in the ocean and you turn one of these guys upside down, you will see their stomach hanging out. Um, basically, the acid in their stomach will disintegrate whatever animal they're eating, and then their second stomach brings it into their body cavity and continues to digest it with stomach acid. So that's one weird way of eating, and it's a pretty interesting animal. There's literally thousands of types of sea stars in the ocean, so this is just one of many, many types. Uh, believe it or not, there's actually a, a sea star called basket sea stars that have over 150 arms. Most people think it's some type of coral, but it is actually a sea star. Um, so there's some that have 14 arms, there's some that have nine. Sometimes a sea star will lose an arm and two will grow back in place of one. So it's a pretty interesting and weird animal. Uh, so that's one invertebrate, a uh, good example of an invertebrate. Another one I wanted to talk to, uh, talk to you about that belongs to the invertebrate family and another echinoderm are the pincushion sea urchins. So pincushion sea urchins come in many, many different colors. Uh, they come in purple, pink, gray, black, black and white, and mixes of those colors. What's fascinating to me about them is all their little prickly spines that, as you can see, are starting to move. That's because urchins actually have to feel their way around in the world rather than seeing. They have no eyes at all. Um, and foot and cushion sea urchins are very common, and they can be found in warm oceans all over the world. Uh, these guys are harmless to touch, but I should warn kids and adults alike, I tell them all at my touch tank program, you do not want to touch these animals um, unless you're an expert. There are venomous urchins in every ocean in the world, and frankly, it's best not to touch anything in the ocean. It's better to just observe and not touch. Not only are there a lot of animals that can hurt you in the ocean, just the oil in your fingers can hurt a lot of animals. So um, you can observe these guys. They're beautiful animals. Um, and believe it or not, this is actually something humans do eat at sushi restaurants. It is called uni. On the bottom of their body, on like the sea star, they do have a mouth and teeth. They have five triangular teeth that fit together in a tiny circle. Uh, they use those sharp triangular teeth to like scrape red and green algae off the rocks. But say a little snail is crawling by slowly enough, he can latch onto it because he has hundreds of two feet just like the sea star. And he can bring it to his mouth and crush it with his razor sharp triangular teeth. 
just couldn't imagine an alien's mouth would look like had I seen one, but I haven't. <laughs> so that is the pincushion sea urchin. The only way they can protect themselves is they actually take little leaves or shells. I've even seen human trash stuck to them and they stick it to their heads. So that actually keeps them um, basically hidden from predators. An octopus, for example, will eat 30 of these a day and that's just a snack for an octopus. So they somehow know they have lots of predators. So most people just swim right past these guys because they're almost always covered in shells or leaves. Uh, so that is the pincushion sea urchin. Uh, another invertebrate I can talk about today is the pencil urchin. Pencil urchins actually don't have all the color variations that the pincushion sea urchins do. They kind of all have the same brown color pattern. And if you look closely, it kind of does look like little nubby pencil spines. A uh, really cool, interesting fact about these guys is they got the name pencil urchin for a reason. The ancient Egyptians over 5,000 years ago used to collect these out of the Red Sea, break the spines off, and make chalk imprints on stone tablets. That was long before we figured out the papyrus weeds that grew along the Nile River could be woven into paper, and the Egyptians eventually figured out the ink sack of squid could be used as pen ink, and there's a little mantle that you can find inside of a squid's body that they used as literally like a feather pen. Uh, but before all that, it started with the pencil urchin, so that's how we kept the name. Again, as you can see, because they are blind, they are starting to uh, slowly move their spines around. Uh, and these guys are also harmless to touch. They don't have to cover themselves up with leaves or shells like the pincushion urchins do, because these guys actually have pretty thick spines. So their main form of defense is to take these thick spines and really dig themselves onto a rock on the reefs. So say I wanted to eat this guy, I might be able to physically pull some of those urchin spines off, but I might not be able to physically get him off of that rock because he'll be so embedded in there. And another uh, cool thing that these urchins are capable of, uh, just like the sea star, is they can grow back body parts. It's called regeneration, guys. So if they lose spines, they can grow them back, which is pretty cool, just like the sea star can grow back arms. Um, another mollusk, uh, or sorry, another invertebrate I want to briefly mention is I have a really cool animal right here. It's called a fighting conch. Conchs actually belong to the mollusk family. And do you see this pretty brown color on the inside of his shell? Well, what I find fascinating as a marine biologist is this guy made his shell himself. So from the moment he was born, he secretes a substance we call in science calcium carbonate, forming layer upon layer of the shell. And it gets even cooler than that. If you look closely at him, you can see that he has dark brown skin. Well, that's why the shell is dark brown. He's actually been secreting his own skin color into the shell and then buffing it and smoothing it with his snail-like skin his entire life. Um, so, for example, probably one of the most popular shells to collect off the beach is the queen conch shell. It's actually the largest of all the conchs. Um, see how it's pale pink on the inside? Why do you think that is? You're correct. Queen conchs have pale pink skin. So that's why it'll always be pale pink on the inside of the shell. So fighting conchs actually got their name for a specific reason. Uh, this right here is called his operculum. I basically call it his foot. Uh, that's how he scoots along in the bottom of the ocean, but I also like to call it his trap door because if a predator attacks him, he can actually close himself into the show like this and protect himself from potential predators. Uh, so that's a fancy word called operculum. He also made that himself. Uh, and that is very hard to see, but right here on the front half, you can see his very alien looking eyeballs. <laughs> and this guy uh, is called a fighting conch because sometimes he'll take that operculum and he'll actually slap you with it. So he's not doing that right now, but that is typically what they'll do uh, as a form of defense. They'll literally slap you with their operculum. So that's the fighting conch in a nutshell. Um, so now you know, if you didn't know before, how all of these shells exist in the ocean. So that's across the board, the snails, the oysters, the clams, the conchs. Uh, they move their shells themselves, so that's pretty interesting, guys. And just to show you a few other uh, examples of an echinoderm, I have my Bahama sea star. This guy is the largest in the Atlantic. Uh, they are bright orange when they're alive. I no longer keep them in captivity because in the last 10 to 15 years, unfortunately, humans have been collecting these out of the ocean. Uh, and, and keeping them as souvenirs, and now they're officially on our Endangered Species Act. So I do not keep them in captivity, but they're really cool animals. I do see them around here at Peanut Island. Uh, like I said, they're very large and they're pretty cool animals. So right here are all these gaping holes where their hundreds of two feet would have been located. And the hole in the middle is where I was uh, talking about earlier is where their two stomachs would have been located. 
so you can kind of see the example of that. Um, and just to point out another uh, basically invertebrate in my tank, we have a crustacean right here. It is called a cleaner shrimp. Uh, cleaner shrimp also lack a true invertebrate, but um, or they are a true invertebrate. They belong to the crustacean family, like lobsters, crabs, uh, shrimp. And these guys do have a, a kind of a harder exoskeleton, and that kind of keeps them protected, but it's not like having bones in their body. Uh, another good example are jellyfish, corals. Those are animals that lack a true uh, vertebrae. So anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed my little spiel today. If you have any questions, feel free to ask, and I hope you have a wonderful day. Be safe, be well. Hey everybody, Christian here. I want to just thank you for watching our content. If you enjoyed, please make sure you hit that like button down below. Also, as you guys know, we are going through some very tough times and our hearts at the Science Center goes out to everyone that's been affected by this coronavirus outbreak. And as most of you also know, we are a nonprofit organization. We rely very heavily on live programs as well as admissions in order to keep the Science Center lights on. So because we're not open, we do need your help. If you enjoyed our content, please consider hitting that donate button down below and giving anything you can. One dollar, five dollars, any amount will help us continue our mission to open every mind to science.